Good evening. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the audience again to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, March 27th, uh, slated to start at 7.15. We had a little technical difficulties there, so um, I apologize, but our audience and everyone else was here um, at 7.15. And our first agenda item is a proclamation for our Treasurer uh, Stephen J. Gilligan. Um, I started to say earlier when I first got involved in politics and was introduced to different people and leaders in the town um, and I was really involved with environmental issues. That's sort of my first entree um, to Mr. Gilligan uh, in looking over and what I'll read from the proclamation afterwards. Uh, he certainly has filled so many other roles in the town where he's volunteered, ran for office and served the town of Arlington in, in so many capacities that um, I, I certainly wouldn't do justice to him or his family, but uh, I, I do want to say to Stephen and, and his wife Nancy, who <clears throat> excuse me, who have um, gotten to know, gotten to know um, over the past 10, 15, 20 years in terms of their commitment not only to the town of Arlington, to the schools, um, to the vision of where the town is going. Um, I think they're certainly a extremely representative couple. Um, along with their, their daughter uh, in terms of families here in Arlington that benefit from the citizens that not only get involved but really go the extra mile to make sure that uh, anyone who moves into town or, or who has been here since time began um, certainly can be appreciative of, of all the efforts and, and uh, energies that they've delivered sometimes to the um, I don't want to say detriment to their family life, but uh, someone else who has also uh, tried to serve in that capacity. I know it, it's, a, it's a real difficult balance. And um, while we're honoring Stephen here tonight, I, I certainly want to thank Nancy and, and Stephen and Nancy's daughter who have put up with people like me and others um, that have taken time away from uh, the imp really important things that you know are the important things to you all. So the first thing I wanted to do was on behalf of this Board of Selectmen and Marie, sometimes the sixth selectman as we say, is to read a proclamation um, to Mr. Gilligan to uh, A, thank him for his contributions and B, mostly highlight for others in terms of all the things he and his family have given to the town. So with that, I will read the proclamation. Uh, Madam Chair, shouldn't we make him stand at the microphone and uh, be seen by the millions watching at home? Certainly, certainly. Um. Madam Chairman, I want to thank Mr. Greeley for suggesting that. It will give me an opportunity to, to say things I've probably never said before. <laughs> I won't use Kevin's line, but I know what he would say. Like to We're not on a six-second delay. <laughs> Okay, and the proclamation reads as follows from all the members of the board and Mrs. Kropelka and in the citizens of Arlington, whereas Stephen J. Gilligan is a lifelong resident of the town of Arlington, formerly the village of Monotomy in the town of West Cambridge, living on Cleveland Street and Falmouth Road, and three generations of Gilligans having lived at his current residence, and whereas Stephen Gilligan attended the John A. Bishop Elementary School, Junior High East, and graduated Arlington High School in 1972, and whereas Stephen Gilligan learned dedication of service to others by attaining the Eagle Scout Award, which is really important. That's a great time commitment. Uh, the Eagle Scout Award, which is scouting's highest and has devoted decades of public service to our town, serving as a town meeting member since his 24th year of age, a member of the historic District Commission for five years, creating new districts, chairman of the Conservation Commission for 10 years, and leading the enactment of the Wetlands Protection and Flooding Bylaw. And whereas Stephen Gilligan held the confidence of the voters being elected three terms as a selectman, developing <coughs> three bylaws, the repairs to private ways, the beer and wine restaurant licenses, and the Cyrus E. Dallin Museum, as well as supporting the creation of the Human Rights Commission. And whereas Stephen Gilligan, with the confidence of the voters being elected to serve 11 years as treasurer and collector of taxes, taxes recovered $11 million in old, old school fund, collected $11 million in old school funds, and recouped over $1 million in litigating against a national financial institution, as well as fulfilling a strategic goal 
by proactively attaining a AAA credit rating for our town. And whereas Stephen Gilligan retires from public life with 40 years of service to the town of Arlington. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Selectmen, congratulate Stephen J. Gilligan on his many years of accomplishments and service to his family, friends, neighbors, and fellow residents of the town to hereby proclaim Friday, March 31st in the year 2017 as Stephen J. Gilligan Day with all the honors and privileges forthcoming. Thank you so much, Stephen. Madam Chairman, I thank you and, and each individual member, <coughs> members of the board. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say it in order of seniority, but Mr. Greeley, <laughs> Mr. Dunn, Mr. Caro, Mr. Byrne, and you, Madam Chairman. Um, I thank you all very much um, for this recognition. I'd like to thank the Adam Chapdelaine, Town Manager Doug Heim, our Town Council, um, for their graciousness as well. Um, it has been uh, a bittersweet decision uh, to step down from office, um, but as the saying goes, all good things must come to pass. And I'm sure there are members in this room who are saying, at last a good thing is coming. Um, but it, um, I have to say, I, I took office as treasurer on April Fool's Day of 2006, <laughs> and I officially leave office as treasurer on April Fool's Day of 2017, and I'm trying to figure out who told me what when, and I didn't take the hint. Um, but there's something I would like to say. It's, it's, uh, I love the town of Arlington. It has been a privilege and an honor um, to render whatever service I could. <clears throat> I first walked into this room with my first official steps in April of 1990 as a member of this board. My wife, Nancy, walked in with me. I was on crutches at the time. And she held me up. She's been holding me up ever since. I take my last official steps out of this room with my lovely wife, Nancy. As I said, it's bittersweet. I want to thank you all for your camaraderie, your jabs, mm -hmm. your support, your competitiveness, and your challenges. And for that, I thank you all. And I just say, go Arlington. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen and Nancy and Katie. And I remember my, um, when you first were elected, I remember you on crutches. And my mother-in-law and Jay Marie, Ruth Mahan and Jay Marie Hilliers, Hillier, former selectman herself, were really big fans of yours. Um, and we're really excited. Um, we, when you were first elected as a member of the Board of Selectmen, so that was sort of one of the things, I don't want to say cut my teeth on, but when I became aware of Arlington as a Board of Selectmen and, and who are the people on it, I remember both Ruth and Jane and others speaking very highly of you and Nancy, and this is before you became parents, so, <laughs> um, so thank you very much. I, I, I do appreciate that. And thank you, Nancy. Um, just myself personally, just even letting me just, you know, bend your ear on my family situation and the support that you provided me really has um, touched my heart, and I really do appreciate it. And, and I know I can count on uh, talking to you in the future, and unfortunately for you, I probably will. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I want to thank you for that. So um, with that, sorry, <laughs> we'll go to the consent agenda. Well, surely, surely. Others of us would like to say. Oh, a few Mr. Greeley, I, 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 I wanted to hog the show I myself. Mm -hmm. I, I, Mr. Greeley, I'm biting my lip. No, uh, you know I've sat beside two Stevens on this board. The most recent one needs some work, yes. <laughs> but the first one I sat beside was Stephen Gilligan, and it's uh, it, it's a time I, I first uh, got on in 1989, and as he says, a year later in 1990. But, uh, you know, I, I think the comment I hear most recently is it's not the same old Arlington. 
you know, and it, it, they're right. I mean, Arlington turns over about 20% right every year in terms of uh, who lives here, or, uh, moves in, or, or moves out of town. Um, but uh, this Arlington for 40 years has been the better because of Stephen Gilligan, and we're less without it. Thank you, Mr. Grillen. Mr. Dunn? So I would say that uh, it predates me by a lot, but at the same time, the very first things I was working on, for instance, was I came to this board for the, to help create the to change the data processing advisory board into the information technology advisory committee. And one of the first things that the information technology advisory committee did was advise on the purchase of a phone system, and the phone system, as I recall, was being like the person who was making the proposal was uh, Mr. Gilligan, and I think that was my my first interaction uh, with him. And as a, I, it, it's not as long as many of the people at this table, but that is indeed the, I can I can tell you where I started, and I can tell you where I am now. And indeed, Mr. Gilligan is here for for both parts. Mr. Carroll, thank you. Well, I actually I moved to Arlington in 1990, so I think that you were the first local official I was aware of. His name I was aware of, so <laughs> chalk, chalk that up. Um, and uh, you know, I've appreciated over the years getting to know you. Uh, certainly, I think for the first time uh, substantially was um, uh, during a training with the Human Rights Commission. I know you were instrumental in setting that up, and um, that that's always been very, very much appreciated. I think by all who've been um, in, involved, because I know it was a tough, tough fight when when it first came into um, into being. Um, and getting to know you through the years, through the schools and, and through, through this position. I've really appreciated it and appreciated talking to you about uh, scouting. So I just want to wish you well as you scout out new adventures um, as, as you leave here. So thank you, Stephen. Mr. Byrne. Um, thank you very much, uh, Chair Mahan. And, um, you know, I, I think one of, the, uh, one of the first committees I was on when I joined the board, uh, Steve was also on. And I, I can say that we maybe had differing views at the time. Um, but I, I really um, have a deep respect for your commitment to the town, Steve. I, um, I really do, and it's noticeable. Um, and, and I agree with everyone here that we will be uh, worse off without you uh, being so involved. So I wish you very well. Thank you. And I just want to correct this. I've learned a lot from this, Stephen. I, I, <laughs> I, I went I for the chief. All program. the politicians. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Thank you, and thank you everyone for being here for this first agenda item to um, honor Mr. Gilligan, Nancy, and Ms. Katie. Um, moving on to the consent agenda. We have the minutes of the meeting, March 13, 2017, as amended. We have the request for a special one-day beer and wine license on April 2, 2017, at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. Audrey Roth, a request one-day alcohol license April 15, 2017, Robbins Whittemore House for another private event. Francis McWeeny, we have a request for a special one-day beer and wine license April 15th at the Arlington Center for the Arts Theater, 41 Foster Street for Blues Apocalypse 3.0, Carol Band. And then we have appointment of new election workers. Devon Diggins, 208 Renfrew Street, unenrolled, Precinct 14. Dorothea Jacobson, 54 Medford Street, Republican, Precinct 7. And Lynn Sullivan, 23 Coleman Roll Road, unenrolled, Precinct 14. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Mr. Burns, seconded by? Second. Mr. Curo. Uh, is there anyone here on any of the special events or anything else who would like to speak to that? If not, if, if there are no further questions on a motion by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Curo, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I need to abstain on item two. I was in Canada and not able to be here on March 13th and uh, vote favorably on the rest. We missed you dearly. Did you really? You're dead, sir. <laughs> um, so with Attorney Himes' consent, uh, agenda item two, minutes of meeting, we'll read 401, one abstention, and under the consent agenda, three, four, Five and six will be a unanimous vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you, you. Attorney mm -hmm. Heim. We'll now go to appointments. First, we have appointment to the Board of Registrar of Voters, William Logan, Bill. Term to expire March 31st, 2018. If Mr. Logan come up and just say your name and address for the record. And William Logan, Precinct 2, 5 Mary Street. And I believe this is a brand new appointment for you. And Yes. Um, 
I'll just give a little bit of my background. Uh, I've been working on uh, elections since I was 15 uh, on various campaigns. I've also poll watched for various campaigns. Um, I studied election law while I was in election law while I was in law school, especially the the Gore and Bush issue. Um, so that was very interesting. And uh, I believe in fair and equal access for all people to vote. So. And if I have to give a disclosure, I've known Bill for many, many years um, here in Arlington, very active in East Arlington issues, very active in um, electoral um, election issues, um, as well as an attorney, um, and, and certainly is uh, well-versed and has the experience for this position. Um, so if there is a motion by Move to approve. Mr. Greeley, second. Seconded, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Um, any further discussion, Mr. Carroll? Thank you very much. I just want to say in full disclosure that I'm an elected <coughs> member of the Democratic Town Committee, and according to the procedures laid out by law, I know that you know, Mr. Logan is here as, as a nominee of the Town Committee. I, I wasn't present for that, the particular meeting where he was nominated, but I do want to say that um, I think as an attorney, longtime Town Meeting member, I know he's also been a Human Rights Commissioner, and one of the first things that he did was to organize a public screening of um, Selma, which dealt with the um, advancement of voting rights, and I think the last time I saw you, we were uh, actually serving on a committee at a caucus to ensure a fair and impartial counting of the ballots there. So I think you're you're well fit for for this position. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> any further questions, comments on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Unanimous vote. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Logan. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Next, we have perhaps one of my last <coughs> actions as chair <coughs> uh, regarding we had an uh, opening on the ZBA, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, myself, along with Mrs. Sullivan, Marianne Sullivan, um, conducted the interviews, had some really exemplary candidates, which is a good thing and some also is a bad thing because you'd like to appoint them all, but um, in my opinion, this round of interviews, there certainly was an individual who um, rose to the top uh, in terms of experience, commitment, and um, expertise, as well as initial knowledge in terms of exactly what, especially with the Zoning Board of Appeals, with the Mugar Oak Tree development that's sort of at the forefront with some other um, issues before it. So. Um, we conducted uh, last week the interviews for the one opening um, that we had on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I'm uh, pleased to put forth um, to my colleagues tonight the uh, individual that I had interviewed and uh, chosen to fill the current um, position opening, and that would be Sean O'Rourke. If I could ask Mr. O'Rourke to come to the microphone, name and address for the record, and sort of a a brief synopsis of uh, your interest and in what you feel you can bring to this position. Hi, everyone. How are you? Thanks. Thanks. Um, as, um, so I've lived in Arlington for 15 years, my wife Kathy and I. We have two children. Uh, Kathy has been a, was a town meeting member for many years, knows many of you. Um, I have been a lawyer for 25 years and handled construction law. Um, dealt with many zoning issues, not directly, but on the periphery. And uh, it was kind of my time to give back to the town. And I think with my knowledge of the construction law and litigation I've handled over the years, and I could uh, benefit the board. And I'm happy to serve. And I want to say in terms of um, boards and commissions and committees, you know, when I first got on the board 20 plus years ago and now, really have um, evolved in terms of the interaction um, from a board or committee or commission. And I really felt that Mr. O'Rourke, Sean, um, with his uh, litigation experience in the courts, as well as being involved, he and his wife, with the last year debt exclusion and mm -hmm. getting a sense of the community and, and really fostering that um, citizen involvement and respect and civility, that um, he'll, he'll definitely be an asset to the committee. So with that, first, if there's a motion, Mr. Greeley? Yes, uh, so I would like to move approval. Uh, it always amazes me. We have 100 boards and commissions in the town of Arlington. And it's just amazing what quality people come forward, like Mr. O'Rourke, uh, to be willing to give their time and serve, especially, I love this in his resume. He once was a Senate page, to which he attended legislative sessions, 
and he assisted in the operation of the Senate. <laughs> the guy's done a lot in his life already. <laughs> Sincerely, that's, this is outstanding qualifications. Thank you for Thank your willingness you. to serve, Sean. You definitely talked about that. Seconded by Mr. Yes, Byrne. I Mr. will Byrne. second. And uh, I'll say when we think about, uh, Kevin mentioned the 100 boards and committees, I, there's a sentence here in um, Sean's letter that says, I believe that applicants appearing before the ZBA should feel that they are listened to and treated fairly even if they do not obtain the result they want. I think you could really take out ZBA and put any committee or commission in the town. And, and I think that that's, um, you know, I'm happy to see that and that's something that I, I really think that we all need to think about every time we, we do um, serve on one of these committees and I, I think that you'll be a real asset to it, um, to the ZBA. I, I know it's a, you know, it, it's a difficult, or not, it, yeah, I guess it is difficult, but you know, there's a heavy workload there, mm -hmm. and uh, I appreciate your willingness to take it on. Thank you. And before I call on Mr. Dunn, I did recognize Ms. Sullivan, who <coughs> helped provide the information for the interviews last week, but I did have Ashley Marr, who is the Zoning Board of Appeals Administrative Assistant, sit in on, on the interview so she could introduce herself, plus also give a parameter of uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, what her function is. So, Mr. Dunn? Sure. Uh, thank you as well, and I think the, I'm very pleased to see you here and uh, volunteering. So uh, ZBA, obviously the biggest thing, the, like the, for the headlines that we're going to see, that the ZBA is going to see for a while is the Mugar property. Yes. And that appeal. And what I just wanted to th say to that was, uh, was that the selectman wrote a letter to the ZBA. Like we took a you know, formal vote on it and wrote on it, which wrote a letter, which isn't something we do all that often. But the gist of it was is that we really wanted the ZBA to uh, take its time, be very careful, and render a like a high quality decision, and that we wanted to make sure that the ZBA had everything it needed in order to do that, which includes resources from the town manager's office or the planning department, and, and the plan and the town manager, of course, is very supportive of that. So, you weren't there when you sent the letter. So I'm <laughs> telling you, <laughs> uh, take your time, be careful, and yep. if you feel like you don't have something you need to do it right, ask for it because we really want to make sure that, that the ZBA gets the resources it needs. To, uh, to, to get that decision uh, well written. Great, I will, thank, thank you, Dan. Thank you, and um, I do know, I don't know if Mr. O'Rourke wants to speak to this in terms of if you were successful, which it seems you will be in terms of the next steps that you would mm -hmm. take, whether it was getting the binder or contacting several officials. Mm -hmm. Officials. I don't know if you want to speak to that or, uh, one of the things <coughs> when, I, when I interviewed Mr. O'Rourke at the end, he inquired, you know, what is the next step I should do? And um, he may have already done it already, which is get the binder out of GPW on Grove Street um, through um, Ashley Marr, um, have a communication with town council and the town manager and perhaps outside council. And the other step that he indicated was uh, speaking with the current chair, Patrick mm -hmm. Quinn, in terms yes. of, I think I've encapsulated yes. all the steps. Recognizing that, you know, Mugar is, um, oak tree development that's mm -hmm. something on the forefront and recognizing that might be a little extra time perhaps than other zoning board of appeal members in the past only because that's the issue beforehand so on a motion by mr Grayley, seconded by mr Byrne. any further comments or questions if not all those in favor say aye aye, aye. All those opposed unanimous vote welcome thank you, Sean. Your thank next you very meeting, much i believe is march 28th yes thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> next we have licenses and permits requests for a sidewalk cafe permit Cafe Nero, 311 to 321 Broadway. Bruce Kidder is the business representative. If you could just say your name and um, address for the record, sir. Uh, Bruce Kidder, Cafe Nero. Okay, and if you could just um, speak to your um, sidewalk cafe permit request. Sure, I got some, do you want pitches or? If you have them, do you, if you want to put them, is that okay up there or whatever works for you? <clears throat> so that's an existing one. Really. <clears throat> so that's it. It's twenty. It's twenty-six seat outdoor cafe. It'll all be fenced in. Uh, Planters, Re really, it's, they're really nice. We, we uh, they're actually all our planters, all our outdoor stuffs, all custom made, handmade. We don't use any cheap stuff. It's all very high end. 
Our, all our umbrellas are hand custom made for us. Uh, they're really nice cafes, nice seats. I think I have uh, not much of a public speaker, so. That's okay. Um, you know, so we got some nice seats. Um, we, we'll put a few of these really, the cushion seats in and then a couple of the regular seats here. Tables, there'll be umbrellas everywhere. Um, you know, our managers will come out two or three times a day, clean up, make sure uh, the place is kept neat and orderly. We heard that the town wanted, well, there's a bike path or something coming right through where we are. So we added a bike rack to kind of try to help out the community and give them a spot so they can put their bikes and they can come in. Uh, our employees have a bike rack inside in the back room. We have a ton of space there, so there's a big empty area out back we're not gonna be utilizing. Uh, that's about. Mr. Greeley? So, uh, the tree, we're not, we're not doing anything with that tree, are we? I'm not touching it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? Yeah. There's, like, there's got to be a tree wood in this town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't want to mess with. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure. Good luck. Thank yeah, you. No. I'm, I'm over approval subject to uh, condi all conditions are set forth. Moved by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Second. Mr. Carroll. Um, any questions? Mr. Dunn? So I guess I, so I'm a little, I was, I had a similar question because I couldn't figure out like how the tree and the planter mapped on this, on the diagram. Is it? Um, it might just be the angle of that picture, but we've measured that and it, it, it fits in okay. without interfering with the tree. Okay. I think it's just the angle of that picture. So that, so that picture is from a uh, guy, Richard Hamilton. He's our designer. He got it online in the UK, superimposed it, and sent it over to me. Yeah. So it might have just been the angle or however Google does their map search thing or whatever. Okay. Cool. I don't, I don't want to, I just, but, but I did, on the plans that you sent to us, it shows uh, three tables of four, but there's an X through them. Oh, that's, yeah. that's the, that's his umbrella. Oh, it means an umbrella. Yeah. It's, it's a UK, so... He does all the design work in the UK and sends it over here to my architects in America, and he drives them batty. <laughs> all, those, all those things he calls, he doesn't call, he calls wood, he calls it timber. Yeah. I mean, just all the expressions that they have over there, and he tries to interact with our architects. It's, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dan. Excuse yeah. me. And um, I'm not holding, this, holding you to this, but um, the submission for your outdoor seating umbrellas, I believe, lists the... Cafe Nero Italian Coffee Company logo. Is that what you plan on being on the on, umbrellas? On the umbrellas? Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm not saying you have to do that. I just saw it in the submission. But that's what it's you're planning umbrella. on. Okay, right. excellent. So it's the Italian Coffee Company on all, all, all four sides and then Cafe Nero on the top. All right. That's perfect. Thank you. I definitely appreciate that. There's a yeah. nice design. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, they're nice. They're nice umbrellas. They're uh -huh. on rollers too, so you can move around. Um, anyone else here to speak to the sidewalk cafe permit for uh, Cafe Nero? If not, on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much and uh, Thank you. good luck. Thanks. When do you open? Uh, soon. We're about halfway through construction now. So we made a few changes, but I hope another four or five weeks. Cool. Thanks for choosing Arlington. Oh, okay. It's my pleasure. It's a great town. Yes. Thank you. Um, next, um, Mrs. Sullivan, do, did we have anyone sign in for Citizens Open Forum? Is there anyone here? If you could just raise your hand if you are for Citizens Open Forum. No. No? So with that, I won't read the preambles, recognizing that there is no one here for Citizens Open Forum. We'll go to traffic rules and orders and other business. First, we have... Agenda item 10, for approval, the Kurt Brown Memorial 5K Road Race, April 30th, 2017. Um, submitted by Craig McDonald. Is Craig or a representative here? If you could just come up to the microphone and say your name and organization or address, whatever, for the record, please. Yeah, my name's Craig McDonald. Uh, Kurt and I went to Audison together at Arlington High. Uh, last October, he had a long battle with cancer and he passed. So um, I'm putting this together to try to, um, you know, raise a little awareness and uh, get the family together again, family and friends and whatnot. And 
his wife lives up on Hillside Avenue with the two boys, so uh, I'm sure they'll be a part of the day if, if we get this approved. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. And it, um, the date, as we said, is April 30th, 2017, starting at? 9, 10 a.m. Uh, that was one of my, um, I gave Marie two dates. Um, I think the officer chose the 30th. Could that be modified? Because he's got a brother in Florida. I'm not sure if, if he's set in stone to come up on the 30th. So is that modified or can, can we um, if maybe you have consider mid-May, uh, the, the Sunday before Memorial Day? Well, when we vote, we, we need to vote a date. Okay. So if you want right. to propose a date in May, that's a little bit later. Okay. Um, and, and one of the questions I would have, and perhaps Mrs. Sullivan or someone else or yourself could answer that is in terms of um, uh, defining the parking um, and maybe with a different date in May, um, perhaps the Veterans Memorial Rink parking lot would be available. I believe on this date on April 30th, they not only have recreational activities, but they had uh, an event going on, which would mean the alternative proposed site would be the high school. Okay. Which you just have to con have contact with them. So do you want to request a date? If, if it's April 30th, we need to kind of nail down the particulars um, tonight. But if you'd like to move it further into May. May you can, yes, if I could, May 21st, Sunday, May 21st. Sunday, May, so 521, yes, 17 at 9 a.m.? 9 a.m., yeah. Okay, and then um, if you want to um, have the board vote that tonight, subject to... Um, terms and conditions of making sure that if the rec department parking lot is available, you can speak to the rec director, John Marshall, I think is it? Yes. John Marshall, as well as if you could just double check, um, I was speaking to Officer Corey Reto, how far your walk goes. If it does go into the Lexington side, um, you'd have to uh, submit a similar request to the Board of Selectmen in Lexington or if you somehow want to modify the walk and you have enough time between yeah, now the, and then. We actually chose a route that was like uh, the cross country route, I guess, is the rink, bike path, circle the res, come back to the rink, so. So they won't be in Lexington or uh, Mrs. Sullivan? Uh, Corey didn't realize at that point in time that it, it did just go on a bit. So he, he did put it in his report mm -hmm. and we can follow up and maybe modify it or you know, okay. yeah. 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 a good deal of the res is in Lexington. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So if you're going around and yeah. Okay. All right. Can I have a mo oh, Mr. Dunn? Yeah, I'll move uh, approval of subject conditions. But I just uh, so wish you best of luck with the event. Uh, with the with the size, I'm comfortable approving it for this time. One thing to think about is that that bike path starts getting really crowded on weekends uh, when the weather gets good. Oh. So if your event is uh, frankly, more successful. Like in future years, it's, you're, I'm gonna ask that you move it. Actually, like do something, either change it off the bike path or move it significantly earlier. Okay. Because at that particular time, you're gonna start. Like I mean, when you get there, you're gonna see it. It's gonna be like, you know, back and forth both ways. And you know, 50, 100 people, mm -hmm. that's fine. But it, like when we have other requests for races and things like that coming in, we say things like you have to be off by nine. Okay. Because uh, that's the only way we can do a big event without uh, interference interfering with the regular, you know, recreational use. Okay. But good luck and I'll be happy Thank to support you. it. Motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded Second. by Mr. Byrne. Mr. Kiro? Yeah, yeah, I think I think Dan raised a, a good point. And actually, the, my daughter's on the cross country <coughs> team. They actually do the res only, but they do several several loops of it, just, just um, and I think it's partly for that for that reason, but but um, give it a go this year and see mm -hmm. see how it uh, how it rolls. Um, I think for the bike path portions, I believe that that's under the town manager's jurisdiction also to give the permission. I think for us, it's probably mostly the sidewalk portion. Uh, so. Okay, and um, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne for a 9 a.m. road race on May 21st, mm -hmm. 2017, subject to uh, Amendments conditions stated therein. Um, I would ask Mr. McDonald to contact the selectman's office, Mrs. Sullivan, and if um, I can coordinate through. I was going to say the and also the town manager's office in terms of making sure the parking and everything is is all set up. Um, anyone else who would like to speak to this issue? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Good luck and thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Nice thing to do. Thank you.
Next, we have for approval the World, World Vision Global 6K for Water, May 7th, 2017. Um, it's Christina Lee. If you could say your name, organization, and or address for the record when you get a chance. <coughs> Excuse me. I am Christina Lee. Um, I'm hoping to have... You said there. Oh, oh sorry. It's okay. Um, World Vision is an organization um, that's based out of Chicago and they do uh, worldwide support for um, children and families who are living in poverty. So six kilometers is the average distance that um, children in the countries that they serve have to walk to get to water, mm -hmm. um, typically not a clean water source. So um, World Vision is hosting a worldwide 6K. It's not, we're not having it as a race. Um, it's going to be a walk because most of the people who I'm looking to have participate are young families with children in strollers. Um, so there will not actually be any racing. No one's going to be timed. Um, and so for every person that registers, a clean water source is provided for a child that World Vision serves in another country. Mr. Greerly? Um uh, thank you for doing this. Can you drive it, or you been only walking in this case? Because I, could, I couldn't walk it, but I couldn't drive it. No, no driving. I, I, I mean, it's going to be in the bike path, so I don't <laughs> think motor vehicles are permitted on I, the bike no, path. I, I think this is wonderful. I heard recently on NPR that um, for $50, it could provide clean water to a family for, their, for a lifetime. Uh, so any of these causes that are working to do that, so thank you. And, uh, move approval subject to conditions as set for. Second. Seconded by Mr. Kiro. Mr. Dunn. You heard what I said about the last one in the yeah. trap? Thank you. It's, it, thank you very much. Okay. And I know and believe you received the different pieces of correspondence that we all have, and it indicated that if you anticipate as you're getting your registration and if it goes over 100 that you need to um, we evaluate coordinate with that with the department. town. And not that this will still go forward, but there may be some one or two extra steps that need to be in, implemented. I just wanted to make sure that you all were aware of yep. that. Thank you. Um, anyone else here to speak to the World Vision Global 6K on May 17th? On a, if not, on a motion by Mr. Greerly, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Again, contact the selectman and or town manager's office. And thank good you. luck, and thank you for doing this. Thanks. Good to see you. Uh, next, we have final votes and comments, and I believe I had a, I know I had a brief conversation with Attorney Heim, and I think the, was it the wording for revolving, if you could tell me there's two that we need to put uh, on hold for Madam now. Madam Chair, I'm sorry, there are actually four that we need to Oh, table. four, I apologize. Um, the first, uh, Articles 29, 30, and 31 are the CDBG application, uh, the bylaw amendment for, uh, Departmental revolving fund bylaw and the revolving funds, those are still being put together in conjunction with um, the offices that um, pull together that information. And then um, also Article 19, vote on the appointment of town treasurer. Um, I'm sorry, I, I apologize for this. I'm still working on it to try to make sure that it reflects uh, what a number of the selectmen have, have been trying to capture. Like you can throw me under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I, he called me and I didn't, call, I didn't get it when I said I'd get back to him, so <laughs> it's not Doug's fault on that one. In any event, uh, uh, we do have a, a fairly substantive set of um, final votes and comments, and I believe that we should have plenty of time, um, given how uh, uh, efficiently we've run the schedule this year, I hope. So do you an anticipate, do more. Do, do you anticipate Attorney Heim on Article 19, 29, 30, and 31, perhaps at the April 3rd meeting? Absolutely. Um, having some, if not all of those, all recognizing of you need to speak to the current chair and future chair and other members of the board. I think what I've heard from the selectman's office is that I need to have all of them, right? Yes, because we have all right, No, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. So I will. I will. Uh, we hope I, to send them out the 10th, the reports. So, <coughs> meeting members. so whoever the soon-to-be incoming chair is um, will have to tie up Article 19, 29, 30, 31 and on Articles 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 26, and 59 for final votes and comments. First, is there a motion to approve by so moved. Mr. Burns, seconded by? Second. Mr. Dunn, um, any further comments on those Warren articles? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. And I don't believe we need to table the other four. 
because we've yep. discussed that they'll be on the next thank you madam chair agenda item and right before i moved uh, uh mr chapter lane have i missed anything i just wanted to mention to the board um before we go to correspondence received that i just um was looking that cause and event 5k that the board had pre uh, previously approved at a prior meeting is on may 21st the date that mr mcdonald just switched to mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to take a vote to give Marianne and I the authority to work with him on an alternative date so he doesn't have to come back to an additional Is meeting. Is it the same <laughs> location? So it's, they kind of <coughs> cross each other. They, I think they turn around at the rink, so they will. Um, uh, mm. Move we amend the previous vote. Move, um, uh, move to amend um, and refer to town agenda manager. item 10 uh, by Mr. Greeley to have the town manager's office, along with the selectman's office, contact Mr. McDonald about a competing event on the 21st, perhaps looking at the 22nd or other. Other, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further questions or comments on that? If not, on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn on agenda item 10 is amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you, Thank sorry Thank you, Mr. Chapelain for, no. I, the chair should have picked up on that, but she didn't, shame yeah. on her. Um, I'm going to go to correspondence received. Is anyone here for something else besides that? Because it's the last agenda item we'll take. If not, uh, we have two items under correspondence received. Is there a motion to receive by? So moved. Mr. Kiro, seconded by? Second. Mr. Dunn. Um, and we have the uh, request reduction to traffic on Alfred Road and Lake Street, as well as a from uh, Tom and Rami Wilhelm, as well as a request from Mr. Mr. Paul Schluckman, removal of parking prohibition on Mystic Street, which I believe that may, Mr. Chapelain. Yeah, so the board had sort of already informally referred that to me at the last meeting. Um, police, uh, the police department and uh, assistant town manager are working on the signage, and the legal department and the police department's traffic division are working on getting their proper updates to the website in terms of uh, Schedule 1. So we are, we're on both of them already. Okay. So if a formal vote to refer would be fine by me if that's okay. what the board there would like to do. Um, so on Mr. Carroll's motion to receive, seconded by Mr. Dunn, is amended to refer to the town manager both of these items. Uh, any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now go to new business. Mrs. Sullivan. Um, well, the election this Saturday coming up. Everybody should vote. Um, that's it. Okay. Attorney Hyde? No new business, Madam Chair. Mr. Town Manager, Mr. Chapdelaine? Uh, the only new business I have is that uh, this Wednesday is the rescheduled grant award ceremony for the small bridge uh, award that the town received, a $500,000 grant. So I think a few uh, members of the board are going to be able to make it. Uh, I may be able to make it, I might not, but definitely Mike Rademacher in engineering will, uh, will be there. Uh, that's all I have for new business. I definitely, I'm in court working. Not as a perpetrator, yeah, working on that, <laughs> on that Wednesday. Um, any further new business? Uh, Mr. Greeley? Uh, just a couple quick things. First of all, uh, we want to send our best wishes to Mrs. Rita Chapdelaine for the imminent arrival. And we also want to wish Marie Kripelka well, who's uh, unbelievable in terms of um, what she has gone through and the spirit with which she handles it and is younger than most of us, I think. Um, the, I, I, I would just like this board's approval um, uh, about, I've spoken to you about this before, this uh, we're no longer necessary where we now have that, you know, the new technology mm -hmm. in here. And I'm gonna start a fundraising campaign if it is with the board's permission to not do a whole lot of work, just basically replace this with some sort of a wood frame, but enclosed would be the, um, the Selectman's Award plaques um, for the, with the past winners and then to add uh, any new winners to it. And I noticed just from tonight that I'll make sure that we keep a ledge on it for times like this when someone brings in uh, boards. Uh, so I, I don't know if I need a vote or would, but are my colleagues okay if I do that? Depends who, who's getting the next person's <laughs> award, I think. Well, not you. <laughs> as, as chairman, I would like to task Mr. Greeley um, in uh, organizing that effort and bringing back uh, it to fruition for a future board vote. Final Thank you, vote. Madam Chair. I think it's actually next year we, we do another round of the Selectman's Awards every five years. Every so. five. Thank you. 
Um, Mr. Burr? Um, yes, I do have um, two things, actually. Um, first, I think it, um, we'd all want to congratulate the Arlington High School hockey oh, team yes. for winning the state championship. Yep. Um, I went to the um, game um, when they won against Central Catholic, and, and it was an amazing performance. Um, they're, they're just an awesome team. Um, I, you know, there was a ton of community support, and, and it was just an, an all-around great time. And, and I think, um, you know, they really made the whole entire town proud, and, um, you know, we're very lucky to have, uh, have them here. Um, second, we had a Parking Implementation and Governance Committee meeting on Friday. Um, we, one bit of feedback that, um, you know, we received and, uh, you know, ask anyone who has any comments to please forward them to me and the town manager is with the uh, library lot. Um, we, due to feedback we heard, um, we decided to do pay by space. Um, we thought it would be, you know, appropriate for, say, families if, you know, you're bringing a few kids in. Um, to not have to go back and forth to the car like in the other lots where it's pay, uh, pay and display. Um, we had some issues with the paint in the winter and you know it's, the maintenance seems to be a bit difficult. Um, and so we are um, you know, trying to decide on the way forward and how to make that you know, a bit more oper operable. Um, I, one option um, would be potentially installing signs Another option would be, um, you know, going back to pay and display, um, which, um, or the other would be pay by plate. And, you know, I think there are pros and cons to all of them. It's something that the group is kind of working on um, right now and working through. And um, if anyone has any ideas, uh, please send them my way. Um, did I miss anything there? No, that was covered. Good. Um, and if I could on that, that, that actually the, um, Arlington Center parking meters was one of the League of Women Voters uh, questions the other night in terms of how successful has it been? Oh, wow. Is it going to be expanded um, to other parts of the town? And uh, one of the things uh, that I highlighted, and if I miss anything, Mr. Duncan also add to that, was that right now it's just planned for the center. I highlighted that Mr. Byrne was the selectman liaison um, along with Mr. Chapdelaine and others, that initially there were a few little kinks, bumps in the road that came to your attention, mm -hmm. especially in terms of people who were only parking for five or 10 minutes or mm -hmm. came on a meter that had 11 minutes and they wanted the 15. And once that came to yourself and the committee's attention, that that was addressed. Um, and if anyone had any cons other kinks that yep. they sought to refer to you. And then I believe the way we answered the question on that in terms of expanding it to any other areas, that right now there wasn't the plan for that because this was the initial. How should we have answered that question better? Um, I, I think that you nailed it there and that there are no plans at the current time to, to expand it. I think we're trying to make sure that you know, the center goes as smoothly as possible. We're a very agile committee. We like to respond quickly. so. Um, please, if you have any comments um, or, or any feedback um, regarding anything that has to do with meters, we're happy to discuss it. Um, I heard a, a staggering stat at the meeting on Friday, and that the free 15-minute button has been hit already 67,043 times, <laughs> um, which is... In a row. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Same person. <laughs> Which absolutely um, floored me, but you know, I, I think it, it shows. Uh, Don't add up that revenue. <laughs> well, you know, it, it gets to I think a really good point about the meters, and that it's not about revenue to us; it's right. about turnover, right. and, and it's working. So we're um, sixty-seven. When yeah. did, when did they first go in? Was it December. I was yeah. gonna say, is it three months yet? Yeah. Wow. So it's. Well, um, I have to say, I'm guilty of two to three times a week when I deliver my transcripts at like five past eight in the morning to the post office. There's three a week since December. Mm -hmm. I'm part of the 67. Well, no, that's, that's, what we, that's exactly what we want to see and we, we hope people use it. So it, um, it, it, it's working well and um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I have for new business. All set, all set Mr. Chapdelaine on that? Yep, that's good. Mr. Carroll. Thank you, and thank you, thank you for that. I've been hearing great things from mm -hmm. merchants about about the inventory too. It's, it's great. Um, I just wanted to just uh, 
thank our, our staff. We had the first um, civics day was here last um, Saturday. Um, but thank um, Charlotte Milan and Adam Karowski and those who organized the whole thing. But our staff put a lot of work in to make sure that we had some effective uh, display boards and and uh, that the, the chambers were neatened up a bit and, and uh, you know, ready to, to receive people. And I think, you know, we had some good, Mr. Dunn and I were there, and I think we had some good conversations with the residents who, who um, came through. And, you know, hopefully this will grow. Um, you know, in, in the future. So uh, thank you for that. I want to thank the chair because I'm cognizant this is your last meeting presiding. <coughs> so I uh, thank you for a, a, a year in, in that seat. <laughs> and I want to wish you both well in the election this Saturday. I hope, <laughs> hope you pull it off. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. No new business. No new business. Um, uh, I guess piggybacking on that, which would have been my last um, New business. I, I do want to thank my colleagues for um, electing me chair this past year, as well as a lot of things that people don't see. Each member of this board who's kind of worked behind the scenes with me in terms of setting the agenda and uh, effectuating uh, what we needed to get out there, as well as making sure citizens and businesses and department heads and others um, were recognized, as well as helping me to do the job more effectively in terms of providing the information that it may seem at times that I was the person who presented it, but it was my colleagues who actually um, did the behind the scenes work, um, whether it was a sale of a property, uh, the, the parking study, uh, anything financial, uh, uh, so many meetings in terms of MMA and, uh, and others have gone to um, that I haven't been able to. So I really have in, in enjoyed doing that. And I have heard from, especially since January, the meetings of this Board of Selectmen, that um, people came up to me, not just to give me credit, but also my colleagues in terms of some, what could be seen as um, divisive issues um, to the town, that because of the five of us, that it, it, it didn't really evolve into that. And, and people really felt very positive about interacting with town government, and they recognized I think they've learned what Board of Selectmen, what town meeting and other is, but um, I, I just wanted to pass on the kudos that I heard from others <coughs> to my colleagues in terms of um, regardless of where Arlington was 30, 40 years ago, um, coming before this board with the five of us here right now, that um, the only uh, trepidation that people had was perhaps going before the microphone in front of a crowd of 20 or 300 um, just the nervousness of that public speaking, but they certainly said that my colleagues um, provided the environment that they needed to come up before that. And I think that's really a testament to this board and, and, and where we'll, we'll go in the future and what previous boards and members of the Board of Selectmen have established. So, And I really do, and I know you all know this, take chairman um, as an extremely uh, important position. And honestly, I... Uh, my vice chairman, Mr. Dan, Dan really uh, picked up some slack for me during the year, especially the last four or five months where things kind of built up um, and really helped me to uh, effectuate the job the way that I could. So I thank all of you for electing myself and Mr. Dunn as chair and vice chair, um, and I wish the future chair and vice chair um, the same continued success that we've established. The other three things, just uh, very quickly. Madam Chair, on that, if I may for a second, um, in my 28 years, that hearing we held that particular <coughs> night, that Board of Selectmen's meeting, is the largest uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting uh, I've ever attended. And I think the way Mr. Dunn opened it added quite a bit yourself, and, but Mr. Dunn added significantly to the civility of that discussion. And you did just a magnificent job uh, in terms of being fair and having uh, so many speakers uh, speak. And I encourage all voters to get out there on Saturday and return Mr. Dunn and return Mrs. Mahan to this board uh, because they're a credit to this town. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, and then Did the I say that right, too? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Greeley. You can pass the 20 this way. No, I'm only kidding. Um, if we could, if, if uh, possible, uh, what we've done traditionally the first week every April, um, and also leave to uh, the future chair, is the first week in April is usually autism lighted up blue. Oh, yeah. If we can yeah. light up town hall mm -hmm. uh, that first week, 
Uh, April 3rd is the first official day of the kickoff for that, um, as well as um, I'll, I'll probably be submitting to the future chair sort of a quick little recognition of that. The second thing, again, um, to the future chairman and vice chair, along with the town manager, there's been sort of discussions at this board of selectmen meeting in the past, as well as at the League of Women Voters um, in the Arlington Eats fundraiser that we had about uh, the future chair ex with the town manager exploring a possible future joint meeting between the Board of Selectmen and School Committee. I know myself and Mr. Greeley and others have banged this drum for a long time. It may not be until the fall, but it was really along the vein of the Mass DOR report um, and just a conversation about, not a commitment to, but a, con a conversation about consolidation, if possible, if feasible, and where fiduciarily um, uh, positive between town and school resources, um, whether it's in terms of bidding on projects, whether it's a town school finance consolidated department, recognizing the fact that any budget decisions, monies expended, uh, or how to deal with liabilities on the school side has nothing to do with town or this board of selectmen. So I just wanted to, because that came up again um, at the debate the other night. And then, um, Last two things are, one of the questions that came up at the League of Women Voters was a uh, projected date for the next override. Uh, I had uh, stated that <coughs> from the last presentation that we had that the uh, 2021 um, budget would be the budget that we'd be talking about that we'd need for an override, which could possibly mean 2020. There was also a discussion about 2019. I was wondering if the town manager um, if either of those dates don't comport with uh, what um, I think it's Mr. Dunn and Mr. Carroll on the Long Range Planning Finance Committee, or <coughs> if you could shed a, just a quick 60 seconds on that in terms of, because people have asked me, they're saying is it 1920 or 21 now, so. Sure, so uh, thank you, Madam Chair. In the Long Range Plan as it is currently depicted, there would be the need for an override for fiscal year 2021, which as you suggested would most likely happen in calendar year 20, 2020. Uh, however, there has been discussions at the Long Range Planning Committee actually for more than, more than a couple years now about whether or not the next override should be held off until the year it's needed or potentially be held before it is needed so that we don't drive the town to sort of a, a cliff scenario with very bad, um, impacts to a if the override doesn't pass. So mathematically, I would say, what you said is absolutely correct, that 2021 is today where we think an override will be necessary, but there are ongoing political discussions about what the right time to have an override question is, which could be 19, 20, 21. And I think the, the only other uh, underlying factor is whether or not matching an operating override with a high school debt exclusion is preferable versus having them as separate votes in separate years. And if Mr. Dunn, because that's where the 2019, which is where we're thinking about the high school, if you could just briefly say where 2019 might come into play. I just want to explain sure. the two dates, that's all. And I'm not saying any date is wrong or right. Yeah, no, I mean, until this board votes it, it's not a, it's not a, th it's not a thing. Uh, and uh, the, so there are, I've, I've definitely come around, there, I think the town manager cited both reasons, I think, already. One is that I think that we, it will make a lot of sense to do it at the same time as the high school. So rather than doing, because those campaigns are so emotional and require so much energy, that doing one campaign as opposed to two is going to be preferable. And the timeline roughly al aligns with spring of 2019 for that, but it depends upon the state and the progress that, that the school, high school makes. And then there's a the question of if we put forward an override in 2019 and it fails, we're going to be scrambling but we'll have but a year to put together alternative plans and like we'll be making a lot of cuts and we'll be saying here's like the next round of cuts that's happening. Whereas if you wait until the absolute last minute, you're gonna have one choice and that choice is going to be, you know, pass it or huge cuts. And uh, I would rather not get that close to that cliff. So those are the reasons that I think we're, my current thinking is, is that the 2019 is gonna what makes sense. So just letting everyone besides just the board um, Anyone else who follows us know that we will have no date has been say, set, but we will have discussions in the future. There was the need for an operating override in 2021, which could possibly mean 2020, but there's also going to be some discussion 
um, is determined by the future chair about whether um, instead of having it at 2019 and a 2020 vote, do it all in 2019. So I just wanted to, just because some people have, had brought up, and, and the bottom line is, this is Arlington, and you know we address the needs as they come forward and they're ever-changing needs, so um, we're just trying to be responsive to that, so there's no right date or wrong date. I just wanted to let people know, you know, where the um, divide or the extension, you know, so any time between 2019 and 2020 for the 2021 fiscal budget and or high school renovation rebuild. Um, kind of look to 2019, 2020, but nothing has been decided. I just want to make sure people were clear on that. So did we say that appropriately? I think so. Yep. <laughs> I didn't mean to. So with that, any further new business, if not a motion to adjourn by so Mr. Curo, seconded by second. Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye, aye. aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. <laughs>